Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. Welcome to the New Earth Christian Church. It's where we are. Worship, praise is So it's, um, you know, Father's Day is next week. <laughs> and so, you know, I was thinking about, you know, our children and us as adults and, you know, following God as we say we do, but then, you know, what, what really gets in our way? And I thought about my earthly father and, and just who he was as a person. And, you know, in his passing, who I got to really discover who he was in my life and, and his actions and what he was up to. And I remember him saying to me, you know, about living a sinless life and, I didn't really understand it at the time, but as I've gone and, and, and developed my walk with Christ, I really understand now today what he was saying about living a sinless life. And so the title of it is uh, Living a Sinless Life, and the subtitle is My Earthly Father's Love. And I'm going to challenge you today um, in your thought process, in your lifestyle of how you view your father coming up on Father's Day. Right. But then also, how do we view our heavenly father? Because if there's any alt about our earthly father, can that get in the way of how we relate to our heavenly father? So I want you to just take a look in your life as we you know, go through these conversations and these principles to see your views of your earthly father and how now we can, you know, have this relationship with our heavenly father. And so as I share with you, my dad, when, when, I, when I sat down and meditated and just looked at his life and his conversations toward me, he would always say, you know, he would have his discernment. He would talk about destiny and inspiration. And regardless of what he was dealing with in his life, he always gave it to God. He always acknowledged God. He always acknowledged Christ, the Holy Spirit. And, and that to me showed me it's not a perfect walk and it's challenging to live a sinless life but the more he gave his troubles his worries his circumstances to god that was an example of living a sinless life and how he treated people and so today's discussion uh we're going to talk about some of the kingdom principles some of the kingdom keys and some fruit of the spirit on on what this looks like and maybe you can look in your own life and, and do some self-examination. Uh, the other scripture I had uh, was 2 Timothy uh, 1 and 7. It says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power and of love and of a sound mind. And, and that's going to be important in, in how we start to look at, are we being our sound mind? and unlocking the door of hope through prayer and asking God for deliverance from fear. And that's why I chose that song because fear is like the label of it all, but what does it actually mean to you in your life when we talk about fear or you hear people talk about fear or bring up fear in conversations? We have a lot of opinions. I had a lot of opinions about my father. I have a lot of opinions about my heavenly father too. <laughs> And so how do we manage those opinions, right? And so I'm asking you to listen and to look in your life from two things, from true and false. The things in your, in your mind that you have about your, your earthly father, are those things true? Hmm. Are those things about your earthly father, are they false? It's not right or wrong or good or bad, but sometimes how we look at our earthly father as the truth may not be the truth. It may be our truth, but it may not be the truth about our father. And even some of the false things that we have about our father may not be a false. Hmm. So how do we let our opinions go about our father so that we can connect to our heavenly father? And that may not be for everyone, but for some, I, I'd say that, you know, if I had an issue with my dad, 
how am I going to come to Christ and be like, okay, yeah, I, I believe what you say, Father, but then I'm having this deal with my own dad. How do, how do those go together? So I'm just asking you to look from those. And as you look at your true and false opinions about parents, this also applies in life, in conversations that are going on in the world. And so what does our opinion cost us towards our father? And what does that opinion cost you in your relationship with our heavenly father? Is it costing you your love? Is it costing you your vitality, your well-being? Is it costing you your self, your self-expression? Can you really have a self-expression conversation with your father? Do we really have that with our heavenly father? Is that opinion of true and false about our father costing us our happiness or our joy? Opinions can cost us these things. It could cost you your own self-fulfillment, your own opinion about something. It could be costing you your own self-fulfillment. So how do we start to overcome these fears and doubts and these true or falses about our parents? You know, fear stops us from trying new things and reaching our potential. It can stop us. Doubt makes us feel un unsure and unconfident in ourselves. Sometimes our opinions do that to ourselves, not people. And if your father is your hero or was your hero, and now there's something in the way of that connection, it could be your opinion about him. Doubt can lead us to lack of confidence in ourselves and our ability of making us feel uncertain and hesitant. That's what our opinions can do. Uh, Proverbs 16 and 9 says, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. So if I'm in my opinion, which is my will, or am I in God's will with what he has for my life and who I need to be for myself and for my family and for my parents? And how can I have that true love for him and still have something going on in my opinion about my family? Our subconscious mind can often get in the way of fulfilling God's plan in our lives when we have negative beliefs or thought patterns around time, fear, doubt, and success. Not all, but some of us blame our parents for why we are where we are today. Hmm. Or what we don't have. Or what I didn't get from them. And I did that. I did that toward my dad before I got to the point of that reconciliation with that relationship with him, I didn't think he understood a lot of stuff that I was going through because he wasn't in the military or he was never married or stuff that I was dealing with. I thought he would never understand that, but I didn't even give him an opportunity to. All he had was love for his son. <laughs> But my opinions about him came from not the adult Faran, but from the child Faran. Mm. And so sometimes we act out those opinions, you know, from decisions that we make up about our parents from very long ago, and we forget, and our behavior gets in the way. So walking in faith and trusting God's promise. Uh, Hebrew 11 one says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And sometimes, you know, as, as children, I want you to take a step back and, and talk to your mom and dad. If you have that opportunity to ask questions, ask questions about their life and how it was for them when they were growing up. By doing that and, and, and connecting back to your parent, it, it creates a space for you to now listen to your heavenly father for instructions, for his will, for his guidance. 
But if there's a true or false about your parent, it just takes one. Just one conversation, one negative thought about that parent that he may not love me or he may not care about me. That can throw off your, your whole relationship with him. With your earthly father. It's about what's in our hearts. It's about how you think about your father. And the world has a whole conversation about fatherhood. <laughs> and a lot of it is not positive. Amen. A lot of it is not positive. Mm -hmm. But what does God say about the father, the source? Sometimes our parents don't know why we're born, as I shared in other sermons. Sometimes they just want to make sure our life turn out. Sometimes they're trying to protect us from things that they experience, and they don't want us to go through that. But they don't realize that this is our life, and some of the challenges that we have as children are not the ones that they had. But it's coming from love. We're going to talk about the spirit of faith as a manif as manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will help you. It will nudge you when you know that your thoughts are going negative toward that parent, to that father. We know. Our inner man knows how we really feel. And you don't have to tell me out loud. Most people don't say it out loud. They say it to themselves. But to have the confidence and strength within yourself as you talk to our Heavenly Father about your earthly father could give you strength and courage and the Holy Spirit can help you and can guide you by getting into the word as we're going to talk about and finding out how to, to connect with that parent, how to give up your story, your truth about your father. Choosing to believe in God's promises and trust in his goodness, regardless of our circumstances and our feelings. Sometimes our feelings are attached to those stories about our opinions. Sometimes they're intertwined. Sometimes how I think about my dad can cause me to be upset about a circumstance that I'm dealing with today, and then I can blame him. <clears throat> And we just want to make sure that, you know, we, we share these principles so that as you grow up as a, as a young adult, as a child, you know, they, the adults always say, wait till you have your own children. <laughs> they say, wait till you have your child. Wait till you have your child. You're going to find out. Mm -hmm. And, and that, is, that is a true statement. And as we get older, we start to reflect and we start to realize that, man, my dad was really a good guy. He really loved Christ. He really followed. He really, he was there for me. Like, but you don't want to, you don't want to get that. I got that at 40. <laughs> if we can help you recognize this at eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, imagine how your life can develop in Christ, in God's will. Not just being stuck in a true or false conversation of how I have an opinion about my parents. And we know that sometimes in our household that the father is not there. But I can tell you, in some cases, whether the father is there or not, as a child, we still have these views of our parents. So yes, sometimes there's not a father in that house. And sometimes there is a father in that house and he's so driven on work that he's still not home. And we come up with different views of our parents because sometimes we get disappointed by them. But how do you deal with those disappointments? And we want to teach you what God's word has to say about that. So the keys of the kingdom and the fruit of the spirit are some of the things that I want to point out. We talk about these but being these 
can allow you to give up that true or false opinion, right? So if you if you're coming from love and you're being loved to your father, how can you have an opinion about him, a true or false? Because you're coming from love. And if you have repentance, if you're being that principle of repentance, then you're acknowledging your part of that conversation. And now you're, you're giving up your opinion. It's like giving up your true or false opinion about that parent. And it may take a conversation with that parent. It may take a conversation to get a better understanding of what your dad is going through or, or was dealing with, again, as a child, because we were all children at some point. Faith, obedience, purpose, fearlessness, prayer. Our opinions don't fit inside of those anywhere. Those That's help right. disappear, mm -hmm. those opinions. If you're being those, there's no room for an opinion. And if you be that, guess what? The fruit that you produce in your own life, you will experience love and joy and peace and patience. Those things that I said was costing you in your opinion about yourself or about your parents. And true or false is just one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bringing different ones, the opportunities that I get to speak. But this first one is really look in your life and how do your opinions about what's true or false about your father. Maybe you have to write it down. Maybe you have to sit down and really see what comes up in your heart when you think about your parent, your father. That could give you a sense of where your mind goes when you think about him. I love my dad, loved him, but he sure got on my nerve. <laughs> and so I went to look at, why does he get on my nerve so much? And that's where I discovered what those things were called. My, my opinion of him was costing me. And I repented and I asked him for forgiveness and we began to reconcile our relationship. It really wasn't even that hard. It took confidence. It took courage. It took a way of being that I had never been before toward him for me to break through my opinion because my opinion was true. You couldn't tell me any different about my earthly father of the views that I had about him. Good, bad, or indifferent. And so as Father's Day is approaching, you know, there's going to be a lot of conversations about our father. There's going to be things on TV about fatherhood. But we want to know what God has to say about it. One thing that I had to become with my dad was patience. Because my opinion of him, I had no patience. <laughs> Because of when he says something, I had no, I didn't want to hear it, so I didn't have any patience. But when I started to acknowledge my father, guess what? Patience started to show up because I started to hear, give him the opportunity to hear what he had to say. It wasn't if it was true or false. I just wanted to hear what my father had to say. Acknowledgement. Sometimes parents, we have to acknowledge our children too. We have to practice acknowledging. People want to be acknowledged. We talk about, they talk about the other day, giving people their flowers while they're alive. What is that? What are they saying? That's another way to say people want to be acknowledged. And sometimes parents, we have to acknowledge our children, not just the bad stuff that they do, but also the good things that they do. <clears throat> and some of us parents, we didn't get taught that from our parents, so then we don't do that. So then it gets those behaviors get passed on, and then that child is is yearning for some acknowledgement. And if we don't get it from us as the parent, then they're gonna go try to get it from their friends or from somewhere else in the world. And I think about those virtues. 
And I saw that patience was a virtue. And we hear people say it, but I experienced it. I experienced that when I became reconciled with my dad, that I had patience. I could pull from patience. I didn't have to pull from being upset. And being able to get that virtue in our heart, in our mind, it gives you that to pull from. And yeah, you might, you might not, you might feel that initial uh, urge or frustration come up, but that Holy Spirit would nudge you and say, uh, 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 remember, remember, we say we're going to be patient. Remember, we gonna, who did you say you're going to be for your dad? Right. That's right. <laughs> who you said, who did you say you, who did you commit yourself to be? And you correct that. Oh, dad, please forgive me. I didn't mean to say that. <clears throat> I didn't learn that as a, as a child. I learned that as an adult. <laughs> mm -hmm. And to be able to share this with you on Youth Sunday, on Young Adult Sunday is very important. This is what Pastor Larry wants us to, to become early on in age. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Man. Man. So what do you have to do? What do you have to do? You have, you have to do these things. Repent, prayer, and living in God's presence. That's giving our will into God's will to see what God has for us and what God has to say about that. That's being, to me, that's being in his presence. For me, I'm giving up my will to see what God has, what is his view on this conversation? Not Amen. my opinion, Amen. what is his view? And by doing that, I get to get into his presence. Then I get to experience, again, that love and that peace and that joy and that happiness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, and you got to study. You got to study your word. Yes. Studying your word grows your faith. Hey. And those practices Amen. become more natural. Practicing those with your friends, practicing those with your family members, but also practicing that with yourself. Do you give your, do we give ourselves patience? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So studying the word, getting the word allows you to learn what the word has to say, what God has to say. And it also gives us stories and passages of what people went through. Mm -hmm. And we can learn from those Old Testament passages. Oh, amen. amen. That's amen. why they're in there. Those are examples of what those people went through mm -hmm. and how God and Jesus allowed them to grow and mm -hmm. still use them. Amen. Even after the mistakes that they made, they That's were right. still, he still mm -hmm. used them to accomplish his word. And so if he did that for them, he's doing that for us. But do we see it that way? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And so practicing to live that sinless life, these are the things that you have to practice. That repentance, that prayer, that living in God's presence, studying his word, growing in your faith. It takes courage to give up your opinion. It takes courage to give your opinion up of what you say is the truth. Because then we might look bad. If I give up my opinion and I say it's true and you say it's false and I say, okay, well, it's false. Mm -hmm. But then what is my experience of myself? Do I feel bad? Do I feel diminished in my spirit? Or do I walk in boldness? And that's one of the things that when you study your word and get in God's presence and grow in your faith, you also develop your boldness. That's right. Your courage. Right. Mm -hmm. In yes. the Lord. In the yeah. Lord. Not in the world, but in the, the Lord. Lord, yes. Yes, amen. The big difference. Yes. The courage in the world is there, but the courage in the the courage I had in the military to serve this country and that that was courage, but it wasn't the courage that I'm getting from God's word now. Yeah. Two totally different experiences amen and being in his that's presence right. that's that experience is being in his presence that's a, it was an experience that we get so i can give up my opinion today amen i can give it up mm -hmm. yes. i learned that it's my opinion it may not be the truth 
but it's my opinion and I and I can give it up and I don't have to feel bad or feel like I lost or they won because I gave up my opinion. It's growth. It's growth. <laughs> That's that boldness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's courage. It's confidence. It takes something to say, you know what? Yeah. Okay. You're right. So let, tell me why you, tell me why your view is right. That's what I did with my dad. So, because so tell me why you think about that, dad. Why do you think like that? Instead of just shutting him off, I acknowledge him. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Why do you care? Why do you say that? Amen. Praise God. Amen. They gave him an opportunity to self -ex We want to self-express ourselves. They gave him an opportunity to just say, I love you, son. That's all. You, or you deserve this. Or you deserve that. It's really from love. That's awesome. But yes. sometimes our Amen. opinions get in the way, and, and we, we don't get to experience the love that's coming from that. So true or false, just look in your life where you have these views of what's true and false about your father. Mm -hmm. Maybe he left. Maybe he was dealing with something. If you have an opportunity to speak to him, ask questions. Yes. Amen. When I hear with my, my parents, I had to go do with, with my own children. Mm -hmm. And my middle daughter, Brittany, she had a lot of opinions about me that were true and false. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to allow her to reconcile from her to me so that she can be free from her opinions. Mm -hmm. And then one day, a couple years later, she said, Dad, what were you dealing with when I was born? Oh, you want to know now. <laughs> <laughs> And I was able to share with her how lost I was at 23. <laughs> <laughs> and it gave her another level of peace. Because she was ready to hear my view, my story, my true or false that I had been dealing with for all those years. Awesome. awesome. <clears throat> so lastly, again, what do you have to do? Repentance, prayer living God's presence, studying your word, growing in your faith, walking in boldness, and being a giver. And that being a giver, yes, it's our finances, but guess what? Your time is just as valuable. Being a giver yes. of your time is just as valuable. That's why I said patience allows you to give your time. We say that, but do we, do we be that? Do we do that? Or we do it for a few minutes and then it's gone. And then I'm back to being frustrated again with my father. <laughs> but when I'm being patient, it's, it's, it's a consistency. It stays there because I'm being it. And the results that you produce Could be any of these. What do you, what do you want as a result of when you go to your father and you hear what he's been give, been going through and you're giving up your true or false opinions about him and you're giving up the stories that we've made up about him and you give that up and you be these principles and you produce these fruit. What is the what is your full experience of yourself? And that relationship well for you you could be delivered you could be delivered from that opinion sometimes those opinions are so deeply rooted in our subconscious mind that it's a it's a it's a part of our way of being it's a part of our character because i view it that way and then that's the way it is and then that's how i act <laughs> so imagine giving up your true or false opinion you could experience being delivered you could get a better understanding of your father by giving up that opinion. You could be transformed in your life by giving up that opinion. You know how free you can be from those opinions? Mm -hmm. Those opinions sometimes run our life. Man. You can have freedom in that opinion. Amen. You can love.
Amen. Love for that love for your father, a, a, a new love for your father, but then a new love for yourself because you recognize who you were being all these years. When I discovered who I was being all those years with my dad, I just could I just could not believe it was a view that I had all those years. It was just a view that I had, a corrupted view, a corrupted opinion, an opinion. So those are the results that you can reduce by living these principles, applying these principles to your life. We're just talking about our father. Apply these principles to your, imagine your whole life you walked in boldness. Imagine your whole life you had the courage. The importance of love, health, Self-expression, happiness, and self-fulfillment. Sometimes we're in the way of those for ourselves. Mix Jesus Christ with faith and immerse yourself in his word. And you can uproot those opinions. You can let them go. And you can be blessed. Amen. Amen. So I thank Amen. you for that opportunity today to share. And just look in your life. Self-examine, look in your life and see what opinions do you carry that are true and false. And really see if they're true or false or not. Yes. For, the other, for, for your father's view. For your view, we know it's true or false. But what about your parents' view? of that is it true or false and that could be enough to release one of those strongholds it could be enough to reconnect to your parent on another level that we know is available but my opinion doesn't allow it to be <laughs> and and these are the things that we want you to walk away and take away with as young adults, as children. Mm. Pastor Larry loves you. We love you. Your parents love you. Your father, whether he's there or not, he loves you. Amen. And our Heavenly Father loves us. And if we can give up our opinions about ours, Amen. earthly father, imagine how much more connected or how connected we can just be with our heavenly father. What he has to say. Amen. We go to his. Bless way. you, Lord. Thank you. Welcome to the new earth, Christian church. Welcome to the new earth, Christian church. Is